Hey Katie. Yeah, Coco. Did your friends that you always tell me about have friends of their own? Uh, friends in heaven or friends who lived alongside them? Ah, uh, both. Yeah, they had friends in heaven, and they had friends like you and I, friends, and like the kids have friends, and some of my friends in heaven. Who are together now? Even were friends while they lived on Earth. Really? Did they help each other get to heaven? They certainly did. Some of them we wouldn't even know about if it weren't for their other friends who helped them get to heaven. Hey, that's kind of like you and me. None of my bush friends would know about you if I didn't tell them about you. Ah,、uh, yeah, sort of like that. What do you mean then? How about I tell you a story about one of my friends to try to explain? I was hoping you'd say that. Last story. Last story. Come and play, play with Katie and Coco. That's the way. Get ready, let's go. Flying through the air with Coco, telling stories with Katie, doing that together, meeting my friends, friends that help us every day. So imagine this: we've got two friends. One is called Saint Francis Xavier, and the other one is called Saint Ignatius. Are you with me so far? Francis and Xavier and Ignatius are friends. Yep, I've got it. Good. Now, when they first meet and become friends. Ignatius loves God more than Saint Francis Xavier. So, what do you think Ignatius does? He helps Francis Xavier love God more. Right. And eventually, Francis Xavier comes to love God like his friend Ignatius. They both live good lives for God, and now they are saints in heaven who are praying for us. But what do you think would have happened if Ignatius never met Francis Xavier and encouraged him to live for God? He might have just lived a normal life. Yeah. And we probably wouldn't know much about him, especially not as a saint. Yep, you're catching on fast. Ah, so we wouldn't know about Francis Xavier if it weren't for his friend Ignatius, who encouraged him to love God. Exactly. And we should all help our friends grow closer to God too. But wait a minute, Katie. I don't know anything about Saint Francis Xavier except his name. And the name of his friends. Well, isn't it lucky that I happen to know a thing or two about Saint Francis Xavier? Yeah. What would I do without my good friend? Had I? Francis Xavier originally came from Spain. He was the youngest son of the king's counselor, and when he was old enough, he was sent to the University of Paris, which was the center of learning in Europe back in the 1500s when Francis Xavier was alive. It was there that he met Ignatius, who had recently become very passionate about his faith after、mm. returning from war. Ah, so they met at uni. But Francis Xavier wasn't as passionate about his faith as Ignatius was, was he? No. At this stage, Francis was pretty casual about being Christian. He didn't do bad things, and he still went to mass. But loving God above everything else wasn't his main priority all of the time. What was his main priority then, Katie? Francis was just a typical young man. He enjoyed his social life, spending lots of times with sports, gambling, dancing, and other kinds of fun. Wait, you're saying that it wasn't a good thing that Francis had fun? Not exactly. It wasn't bad that Francis was having fun. He was just spending too much time doing those things and not enough time studying and praying. Ah.、Oh. So did Ignatius help him? Yes, Coco, he did. Ignatius saw that Francis could be a very great servant of God if only he focused his attention on the right things. How did Ignatius persuade him? Well, talking with him was one tactic, but while explaining things may be able to convince our minds, what usually needs to happen to convince our hearts? Ah, showing.、Sure. That's right. Instead of relying on words, Ignatius showed Francis that the happiness he was always seeking in this life 
was nothing compared to the happiness he could enjoy one day in heaven if he loved God above everything else. He prayed for Francis and even made sacrifices for him. Like one night when Francis was walking home past a river, he saw Ignatius standing in the cold water. What? What was Ignatius doing in the cold water at night? That's exactly what Francis wanted to know. And Ignatius said he was doing penance for Francis' soul so that he could finally follow the will of God more fully. Francis said leave. Ignatius was pretty keen to win Francis over to God. But Francis listened eventually, didn't he? He did. And he never regretted it. He became one of the first members of the Society of Jesus, a new religious congregation that Ignatius himself was starting. And with his heart now fixed on God, Francis found himself a few years later traveling all the way to India as a missionary priest. India? That's a long way from his home. I hope he knew where it was. Well, he got there, so he must have known. Woof! What did he do in India? Did the people there know anything about Jesus before he came? They knew a bit because the Portuguese had already settled in the region he had not been instructed to go to. But they were in desperate need for someone to show them what a precious gift it was to be a Christian. Though the Portuguese settlers were Catholics in name, few of them put their faith into practice. Many were former prisoners, others had come to India to run away from mistakes they'd made back home in Portugal, and most of the rest had come to seek adventure and fortune. Yeah. They don't sound like easy cases, do they, kids? How did Francis help them to come to know Jesus, Katie? He started with the ones who would be most welcoming, the children and the sick. He taught them about Jesus and then showed them how Jesus really loved them by loving them himself. There was no sick person that Francis was afraid to touch and no child whom he would abandon. But soon he learned of another group of people who needed his aid. Oh the Indian community in the region. They had been baptized 10 years earlier, but had never been taught their faith. So Francis moved his focus to them and spent three years teaching them about Jesus, building churches, baptizing more people, and doing all he could to strengthen their community. The children were so eager to learn that they wouldn't let him go to bed until he had taught them a new prayer. Can you imagine that, kids? What if your parents said, OK, kids, time to go to bed? And your excuse for not wanting to go to bed wasn't that you're hungry or you're not tired or you want to do something else first. What if your excuse was, no, no, I don't want to go to bed until I've learned another prayer? Maybe the kids Francis taught knew how important praying was because they had no one else to teach them such cocoa amazing things before. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes we only learn how lucky we are to have something when it's hard to get. Even for Francis, his missionary work was a constant battle. And despite his success, he was sad that he couldn't give everyone the attention they deserved. He wrote about this in a letter to Ignatius. Wow, so even though they were in different parts of the world, Ignatius was still supporting his friend? Many, many people here are not becoming Christians for one reason only. There is nobody to make them Christians. Ah, oh, poor Francis. It must have been so hard to look after so many people, almost on his own. Again and again, I have thought of going round the universities of Europe, especially Paris, and everywhere crying out like a madman, grabbing the attention of those with more learning than charity. There must have been heaps of people at the universities. Imagine if they all travelled around the world teaching about Jesus! I would cry out to them. What a tragedy! How many souls are being shot out of heaven and falling into hell thanks to you! Ah! Sorry, are you frightened, Coco? I'm not frightened. I'm just so sad that Francis didn't have enough people to help him. Yeah, me too. It is really sad. Still, Francis Saviour was not going to be put off by that. He wanted to reach more and more people, so he travelled even further from First to islands near Malaysia, then eventually all the way to Japan. Wow, Katie, he's been more places than me. He couldn't even fly. Francis Saviour probably would have travelled around the whole world if he lived long enough, Coco. 
he wanted to be the good friend every person in the world that Ignatius had been to him. Was there anyone who didn't listen to him when he tried telling them about Jesus? Luckily, most people did listen and came to Jesus themselves. But in Japan, he didn't have as much success. He was able to set up some churches, and there were some who were eager to become Christians. But the main culture was very set in their own religious beliefs, and it didn't take long before Christians began to be attacked. Oh no! Did Francis get killed there? No. Once again, he was called elsewhere. This time, he was going to go to China. Going to go? Did he not make it there? No, he didn't. There were many complications trying to get there, and he had to wait on an island for quite a long time. And while he was waiting, he became very sick and eventually died. Ah, oh, so the Chinese people never got to learn about Jesus then? Not from Francis Xavier. He had won many friends for God. Thousands and thousands. God had decided to call him home. Katie, do you think St. Ignatius knew that Francis Xavier was going to bring so many people to God when they first became friends? He definitely saw something special in Francis, but only God could have known what great things Francis was going to do. It definitely wasn't an accident that they became friends, that's for certain. I hope I can be as good to my friends as they were to theirs. Me too. Let's ask St. Francis Xavier to pray for us. Dear St. Francis Xavier, thank you for listening to God who was calling you through your friend and spreading the same love to people all over the world. Help us to encourage our friends to love God more and please pray for all missionaries who are still going out into the world to make more friends for Jesus. New friendship goals, anyone? New everything goals. St. Francis Xavier, more like St. Francis Xavier. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I just don't have the spot. A bus driver was heading down a busy street. He went past three stop signs without stopping. He went the wrong way down a one-way street. He answered a text message on his phone, but he didn't break any traffic laws. How? I hope you didn't think of all of that on the spot. No, but you and the kids have to think of the answer on the spot. <laughs> Go on. How did he not break any traffic laws even though it seems like he did so many things wrong? Uh, someone else was driving. That's a good suggestion, but no. Uh, he was not real. Uh, he was real. The, He's not just imaginary. So he's going down, he's going down this street, he's doing all these wrong things, passing the stop signs, he's going the wrong way down the street, he's answering his phone. He seems like he's paying no attention to the road, right? Yeah. Funny. Why would he be not paying any attention to the road, I wonder? No, it must have been something pretty distracting. Maybe a cousin's birthday. His birthday. Well, maybe. That could be right, but it's a bit off topic. Um, if he's not paying any attention to the road, why wouldn't he be? Uh, 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 I don't get it. Um, okay, so if he was driving, what would he be doing? Okay. He would be looking, right? Yeah. He would be looking and he would follow the signs. Yeah. But. What if he wasn't driving? Ah, he was in a spaceship. Well, he could still be driving in a spaceship. <laughs> what if he was just walking on the street? Ah, he's just walking. Yeah, what if he's just walking? So he's going along the stop signs. Only the stop signs are for the cars and the buses. And then he goes wrong way down a one-way street, but Pedestrians can walk anyway, and he's ah. on his phone while he's walking, ah. so he's not breaking any traffic laws. Ah, oh, he couldn't be flying. Yeah, apart from the fact that bus drivers can't fly. That we know of. Yeah, sure, Coco. Anyway, I think it's time for some craft now. Craft? Oh, yeah! Craft! <laughs> Kids, 
craft time again. And it's craft time. Yep, it is craft time, Coco. Like we do every time. And today, guess what we're going to be making? Let's like spaghetti. We're going to be making some friendship bracelets. Now, I've already made some previously. So at the end, they're going to look like this. Wow. And I will show you how to make them. So what we need is just two pieces of string, preferably colourful string. I've got two different colours. I've got purple and blue. But as you can see, you can do it with any colour you like. So what we need, they need to be quite long enough because they're going to fit around your wrist. And we also need to do kind of a, a cool knot. So it needs to be long enough to be able to twist around there. It's better to be longer than shorter because we can always cut off the ends. Okay, so what we need to do, we're going to get one piece. I'm going to fold it, fold it in half like this so it's even. We're going to do the same with this one. So that's this long and it's going to go meet the ends. All right, so we've got two different strings like that. Okay, now one of them, I'm going to use this one, this blue one. That's going to go along this way. So with the loop towards you and the ends towards away from you. Now with the other piece, you're going to cross that on top. For one piece, I'm crossing it on top. And we've got the loop on this side. And then we're going to loop it around again, like this, like this. And these two ends are going to be on the same side as this loop. So loop, ends and loop. And now we're going to do another crossover. We're going to get this purple loop and cross it over the end of its legs, of its ends. So now we've got these two loops and this end here and this end all the way down here. Now we're going to get the blue loop or the underneath one. See that this one's all underneath still. And we're going to cross it over this purple loop like this. So now we've got this funny pattern here. So we've got this loop going here in an L shape all underneath except here over. And we've got this one going all the way like this, around and underneath. Now we're going to get our blue loop again. And we're going to get our purple end. And we're going to put the blue loop underneath the purple end, like this, underneath and over. Okay, and neaten, neaten that up a bit. Okay. So we've got our loops on opposite ends, looping around underneath. Okay. Now we're still working with our blue loop. Make sure we've got enough, so you can pull it through a bit to make sure you've got enough. Still working with our blue loop, we're going to do, we're going to push it over this purple one, over, under its own blue, under, and then over this purple one, over. Did you get that, Coco? Wow, that's so complicated oh, for me. I know, it is a bit confusing, but watch it a few times and you'll get the hang of it. Okay, and that is actually our, all our looping and crossing over done. Now all we need to do is pull it tight. So we grab the two purple ends. So we've got to grab the purple end and the purple loop. Grab that in one hand. And then we grab our blue loop and our blue ends in another hand. And we're going to slowly pull it apart together. And it's going to go into that fancy loop like all the other ones. Make it nice and perfect. There we go. So that is the main decoration of our friendship bracelet. And then with the ends, that's how you, that's what you put around your wrist, like this. Now, so you don't have to tie all those together. See how we've got two loops and two ends. So we want to make the loops shorter because the loops are going to be the short parts and then that's going to how it's going to connect. So we're just going to push this loop, we're going to adjust it. So I'm going to push it through, just working with the blue right now. Push it so it's just short enough. And then we're going to pull it through the other end, like that. Tighten that end. And then we're going to do the same with the purple. So make the purple loop about the same size as the blue loop. I'm going to pull that through. So we're going to keep pulling the other end of the purple. So get the purple end and pull that through. Tighten it again. Now you'll probably need some help to get someone else to tie it onto your wrist, but what you're going to do, you're going to put it, that, so that's going to go on top. 
So we've got one blue loop and then I'm going to get this loop and the purple end is going to go tie through that blue, blue loop and this one is going to go through the purple loop. And you can tie it anyway, but this is just a cool way that I figured out. And then all you have to do is tie the ends together. And obviously I can't tie that with one hand, but if you get someone to help you, they can tie a bow with these two ends and then you can have your friendship bracelet will be done and you can make one for you and your friend, whatever. And you can both wear your friendship bracelets. How cool is that? And that's all done. There we go. Hey kids, if you'd like extra instructions on how to make this awesome knotted friendship bracelet, yeah. you can find it at swpals.org. And Coco and I would love to see you guys wearing your very own friendship bracelets. I'd love to see whatever colors you choose. Coco Project. And you and your friends having fun with your friendship bracelets. Have fun. Bye bye kids. That's really me, go Katie. Can I have it? Have it? Yes, I'm your friend after all. And it is a friendship bracelet. Yeah, more like a friendship necklace for you in your case. Nah, it looks right. so pretty. Let's see if it fits on you. Let's have a look. Pretty good. Over the top. Ah, uh, actually. There we go. Wow, Candy! It looks great on me. Look how good I look, kids. I should keep it, shouldn't I? All right, you can keep it. All right, all right. See you, kids. I'm off to show everyone my new friendship necklace bracelet. See you next time, Coco. See you next time, kids. St. Francis Xavier, he'll always save ya. Come and play, play with Candy and Coco. That's the way. Let's go! Flying through the air with Coco Telling stories with Katie You and I together Meeting my friends Friends that help us every day Katie and Coco That help us every day Katie and Coco Play and sing Pray and bring you and I We do our thing It's Katie and Coco Are you searching for purpose of life? <laughs> Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.